Hey everyone, Matt here with Nightrun Studio. In this video, we're going to take this enemy who's doing a simple chase and make some improvements. We're going to give him the ability to flip from side to side, to animate when running, and we're also going to upgrade him with a simple state machine, which will build a foundation so later he can do more than just idle and chase, but have other states as well. Let's get started. So the very first thing we're going to do is get our enemy flipping. And similar to our player, we are going to flip using the local scale method. So you'll notice right now he has a negative one scale when he faces left. And if we turn it to one, he would face right and his sight changes with him, which works really nicely. So let's head into our enemy movement script. Now we will be working from a simple enemy movement script. You can check out the video on that if you want to see the details of how it works. But suffice it to say that right now the enemy either idles or chases the player. So to get our facing direction working, we're going to start by creating a private integer called facing direction. My enemy starts off facing left, so I'll start it with negative 1, and when he faces right, we'll change that to a 1. So the way this will work is that any time he's chasing the player, we want him to check to see which side of him the player is on, and then face that direction. We'll do this by beginning with an if statement. So if the player's x position is greater than this transform's position, that means the player's on the right. And if the player is on the right, but the enemy is facing left, or negative 1, we need to flip. I'm just going to copy that line. We'll put two lines here, that is the OR statement. And we're going to provide the other possibility in which the enemy might need to flip, which is if the player's X position is less than the enemy's, meaning the player's on the left, but the enemy is facing right, meaning his face direction is positive. If either of these things is true, the enemy needs to flip. Now when I say the enemy needs to flip, it means we need to do one of two things. So let's create a void method here called flip. And here we're just going to change our facing direction. If we multiply it by a negative 1, it will always become the opposite of what it was previously. The other thing we need to do is to actually flip the graphic of the enemy. We'll do this by doing transform.localScale equals, and we can't just modify the x, so we need to make a new vector 3 here. So for the x value, we're going to take the transform local scale's current x value and just multiply it by negative 1. Then for the y and z, we'll just keep them as the current transform.localScale values, with y and z respectively. There's no additional setup needed at this point, so we can head right into play mode, and you will notice that if we go around behind and then approach the enemy, he does indeed flip directions. It's working nicely. Next, we just need to animate him, but if you've been following this entire series, you may have an error popping up at the moment. This is pointing to our enemy combat. Now if you take a look in enemy combat, you can see that currently, every time we collide with anything at all, we're looking for a player health script and trying to take away damage. The problem is this also fires when he bounces into trees and things. So let's just quickly check, first of all, to see if the collision game object has a tag called player, which is what we set up in the last video. Now the enemy should only try to deal damage if he's in fact hitting the player. Now next up we want to actually set up our animations. Now I've gone ahead and created two animations for my enemy, one for idling and another for moving. If you want to see how to do this, you can go back to our animation video. I'm using the exact same method I did for our player. However, the way we set up our animator is going to be quite different this time around. Now you can already see the two animations I have on my character here. And to make things easy, I'm just going to rename them. So I'll take this first one. It's orange because that's the default state. and I'm going to rename it idle. And for the other one, I'm just going to call it move. Next, we can head over to the sidebar here, click on parameters, and I'm just going to add a couple of Boolean parameters. One we'll call is idle, and the other we'll call is moving. Now we're going to set this up so that we check to see which bool is true, and then we head to that state. So we'll make a transition here, leaving idle. We'll take off its exit time, give it zero duration, and then we're just going to change a parameter so that if is idle is false, it exits this state. We'll then create another transition from entry to move, click on it, and we're going to make it so that if is moving is true, it comes here, and then make another transition out. We'll take off the exit time and duration, and make it so that if is moving is false, we leave this state. Now we just need to make sure that only one of these bools is active at a time, and then we will always play the correct animation. And this is also set up so we can easily add more animation states down the road. Now we just need to hook this up in our movement script. So first of all, we need to talk to our animator. So let's make a private animator reference called anim. Then in our start method, we can find this component by going anim equals, 
get component, animator. This will just search the game object for the animator and fill that slot. Now this next step is going to be a little more intermediate, but this is going to be what really sets us up well for the game to work well and be expandable in the future. We're going to create a state machine, but to do this we need to keep track of our states in an organized way. So let's head down below this entire script, outside of all the brackets. We're going to make a public enum called enemy state. This is kind of like creating our own variable. We can make whatever types of states we want and put them in here, and then we'll be able to select them whenever we want the enemy to move between states. So now that we've created this enemy state enum, we can use it as a variable to track our enemy's current state. So let's head up to the top, create a public enemy state, and we'll just call this enemy state for now. Now to show how this works, we can pop back over to Unity. Now when I click on my enemy and look in the enemy movement script, you can see this drop down menu that will include all the different states we have to choose from. Now we don't need to see that in Unity, so we can change this back to private. And now our code has an internal way to track the current state of our enemy. So then at the start of the game, we'll call change state, which we'll make in a moment, and it's just going to say that we want to change our state to idle to begin the game. Now we'll create that change state method down below, and it's just going to take in a state as it needs to know what new state we want to go to each time. Now let's begin by setting up our animations. So if enemy state is equal to enemy state idle, then we want to tell our animator to set its bool called is idle to be false as we're leaving that animation now. Similarly, if our current state is enemy state dot chasing, then we want to tell our animator to set its bool is chasing to be false. And here I'm actually just going to go back to my animator and call our bool there is chasing, as that'll make more sense with the way we're setting up our state machine. So at this point we've exited our old animation. Next we'll set our new state. So we'll tell our enemy state that it's now equal to whatever new state was just passed in. So now we can just copy all of those animator commands, except that now we just want to make it so that since we've changed our enemy state, if the current state at this point is idle, we want to set is idle to true, and if our new current enemy state is chasing, then we want to set is chasing to true. I'll just put a couple of notes in here to help us remember this in the future. So the first section exits the current animation, we update our current state, and then we update our new animations. So now we just need to call this method whenever we want the enemy to change states. So let's head up to on trigger enter, where we're already detecting that we've collided with the player. Here, after we set is chasing to true, we're just going to change our state to the chasing state. Similarly, when we exit the collider, we want to change the enemy state back to idle. And now that we're tracking our state, we actually don't even need this is chasing bool at all. So let's come to the very top of our script and get rid of that. We no longer need to do is chasing here in update. Instead, we'll just check to see if we are currently in our chasing state. And finally, we can just simplify things by getting rid of these is chasing equals true or false lines altogether. Now at this point, we're very nearly ready to test this out, but first in our start method, we need to fix one thing. Our change state method controls all of our animations. However, here we're changing our state before we actually are able to talk to the animator. So we're just going to grab that change state line and make it after we found our animator. All told, that's a lot of changes in one video, so let's just quickly recap. We now have the enemy state variable to keep track of our current state, which allowed us to get rid of the is chasing bool. In our start method, we begin by changing our state to the idle state. Then in update, rather than checking a bool, we now check to see which state we're in, and if we're chasing, we engage in chasing the player. In our on trigger enter, we now check for the player, and rather than using a bool, we change our state to chasing if we encounter a player, and when the player leaves the trigger, we change our state back to idle. We also have this change state method, which exits the current animation, updates our state, and then updates new animations. All right, so at this point, there's no setup to do in Unity. When we enter, we've got his walking animation. He goes back to idle once we've left, and you'll notice here he turns around just fine, chases, but once I get far enough away, he goes back to his idle. All right, I know that one was a little more complex than what we've done in the past. Apologies for that. I hope you're able to follow. If not, be sure to pop into the Discord server to ask some questions or share your code. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.